This is part two on a two-part lesson on sketching motion graphs. I'm going to choose a velocity time graph again with uh, several segments showing different kinds of motion. Uh, dividing my segments off into T1, T2, T3, and T4. And you'll recall our definition for average acceleration. And again, the graphical definition here is the slope of the VT graph. That's what average acceleration is. So the slope of the first segment, of course, is zero. My average acceleration is zero for the first segment. For the second segment, uh, delta y over delta x, so that'd be zero minus v1 over t2 minus t1, my average acceleration. Uh, for the third segment, again, I'm, I'm uh, horizontal line, so average acceleration is zero. But what happens here where my slope is not constant? What is the acceleration at the point labeled 6? Again, to get the instantaneous value, we make a tangent line shown in red. And we measure the slope of that tangent line, construction line shown in light green here. Delta y over delta x, in this case delta v over delta t, gives us the instantaneous acceleration. And that is the slope of the tangent to the vt curve. And there's more information we can get from a VT graph. If we measure the area under the curve, from the curve to the T-axis, we get the displacement. In this case, the light blue area would be the displacement from 0 to T1. And light green represents how far the object has moved or displaced as it moves from time 1 to time 2. So in general, the area under a VT graph gives us displacement. Back to our blue rectangle here. Uh, rectangle area is length times width. We'll call the Y direction our length. Look at the units here, meters per second. So our length would have those units times our width in the X direction, seconds. The area has units meters per second times seconds, which is meters, which is displacement. Okay, let's look at the acceleration time graph for an object. And again, arbitrarily, I'll make up a graph here with some interesting segments to it. T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5 sort of define the different segments. Also worth pointing out here, our, our model of motion, our six kinematics equations, only apply where acceleration is constant. And so only apply over these three time intervals for this particular example. All right, the area under the curve shown in red here. What would it give, the area under an AT curve? Well, let's check the units. Again, length and width. Uh, length would be meters per second squared times width seconds. That gives me meters per second. That sounds like velocity. In fact, the area under an AT curve gives you the change in velocity. So to throw some numbers down here, if at zero, if at T equals zero, I was, say, traveling at 10 meters per second, um, and my ch and my area were was uh, four meters per second. Then at t1, I'd be traveling at 10 plus four, or 14 meters per second. The area below the time axis, shown in blue here, is considered uh, negative. And what that means is the change in velocity is less than zero. Okay, so what does a slope of an AT graph give you? Well, it gives you this new physics quantity called jerk. And jerk is a measure of the rate of change of acceleration. So what units would jerk have? Rise over run for slope. So my rise units are meters per second squared. Run is seconds. So that'd be meters per second squared per second or meters per second cubed, units for jerk. So there's a connection between displacement, velocity, and acceleration through area under the curve and slope of the tangent line. Let's start off with a velocity time curve here, velocity time information, and we'll generate the other two curves. It's easiest when you line up the three curves vertically like this and uh, delimit the different segments of the curves. So here I've done that. So if I were to measure the area shown in blue under the VT curve, 
area of a triangle here. Um, assuming that I started at position 0, that would give me my change in position, and the red dot would be the value of that area. So I've got a, a first dot on the position time curve. Since my VT graph is a straight sloping downward line in that first segment, I know I've got a parabola for my position time graph. And uh, at where that first dashed line meets, we have V equals zero. So I know that the slope of the tangent line uh, on the position time at that point should be zero. And there I've got my first green segment, parabola concave downwards, and now for the first segment of the AT graph. Again, going from VT to AT, it's the slope of the tangent line. And for that first segment, I can see that my VT graph slope is negative. That means my acceleration is negative. In fact, that continues all the way to the second dashed line. So there's my pink line for the AT graph, constant negative value. Of course, the shaded area shown here represents the change in velocity. So again, at time zero, it looks like we started with some positive velocity, and then we ended up at zero velocity at the first dashed line. Well, the difference in those two velocities would equal the area under that AT curve. And it's a negative area, meaning the change in velocity is negative. I have drawn two tangent lines here on the position time graph. Uh, both slopes of the tangent, uh, the slopes of both these tangent lines is positive. We can see my first line is more positive than the second. It means my velocity in the positive direction is decreasing. And that certainly is consistent with the first segment of my VT graph. So moving down the graphs on the right, it's the slope of the tangent line. And moving up the graphs on the left, it's the area under the curve. Red shaded area shown on the velocity time graph, about equal to the area on that same graph shaded in blue. Um, that means that my change in position or my displacement is the same as the first displacement over the first segment, but in the negative direction. Gives me my second point at the end of that second time interval means I'm back at zero position. Total area under the VT graph from zero to the end of the second time segment is equal to zero. Two areas cancel out. And that means I'm back to my original position on the position time graph. So there's my parabola covering the first two time intervals. For the third time interval on the velocity time graph, I've got a constant negative velocity. And that means the slope of my position time over that same third time segment should be uh, negative and it should be a straight line sloping downwards. So negative slope, straight line. Let's finish off the AT graph. Third time segment, velocity is constant, uh, so acceleration is zero, pink line. Uh, fourth time segment, velocity is, has a positive slope, so that means the acceleration is positive, hopping up. And then for that last segment, my velocity is zero. Of course, acceleration is zero. So we've completed the acceleration time graph. We had the velocity time graph. Let's complete the position time graph for the last two time segments. Fourth time segment, velocity time graph. Velocity is changing at a constant rate. Positive slope means uh, I know I've got a parabola for the position time over the same segment, and the parabola should be opening upwards because it's a uh, positive acceleration or a positive slope for velocity time. I also know the velocity at the end of that fourth time segment is zero, and that means the tangent to the position time at that point should also have slope zero shown by gray line here, and there's my parabola's vertex. Velocity is zero for the last time segment. That means my position for the last time segment does not change horizontal line. Given one motion graph for an object, we can derive the other two graphs by using slopes of tangents and area under curve. Okay, this is part two of a, a two-part lesson on how to get information from motion graphs. And, and in this second part, we looked at how to get information specifically from a velocity time or an acceleration time graph. And the main points here is the 
uh, had to do with slope and area under the curves. And for a VT graph, just to summarize one, the slope of a VT graph gave us acceleration and the area underneath a VT graph gave us change in position or displacement. Okay, let's try a practice question here and uh, be prepared to pause your viewer and try this question. So he, here we are given a velocity time graph for an object. And the question here is, looking at the velocity time graph, which one of the following statements is not correct? And of course, if we are talking about velocity, typically you'd be given a direction. So here, positive direction is north, and of course, negative is south. Uh, here are my here are your options a b c or d let's change option b here so a the object spends more time traveling southwards than at rest um, we're going to change b the object is accelerating most between time interval three and four c the object returns to the start position somewhere between t2 and t3 and finally, the object finishes north of where it started. So which one is not correct? Pause your viewer, think about it, try this question. The green line here indicates the total time spent traveling southwards and the pink line total time spent at rest. So we can see right off the bat that option A is not correct. The slope of the VT graph gives us acceleration, so here's where the slope is greatest. Um, so option B is correct. Area under the VT graph gives us change in position or displacement. These two areas are about equal the same, light gray and, and light mustard here. And so we can see that somewhere between T2 and T3 we are back at the start position. So option C is also correct. And lastly, we're looking for area under the curve here to get displacement. And we can see that the negative area, the area under the uh, time axis, is less than the positive area. That means we're going to have a net displacement in the north direction. We do finish north of where we started. Answer D is also correct. So final answer is A. Okay, for this next question, we'll be dropping a basketball from the observing bleachers. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a guardrail here, but of course there's one in our in our gym. And the basketball bounces up to half the original height from which it was dropped. So released from rest, basketball falls, bounces off the, the floor, and, and back up to half the height. Question here is, which one of the following VT graphs gives us, or is correct? Here are your four choices. All velocity time graphs, which one is correct? Pause your viewer and try this question. Well, we know the acceleration of the basketball is constant, so that means the slope of the VT graph should also be constant, a straight line. So that's going to eliminate options A and C. We're left with B and D. Basketball is in contact with the ground when V equals zero. And we know that the, uh, the blue shaded area here should be twice the gray shaded area. Gray shaded area is the displacement from when it leaves the ground to half the height, and the blue shaded is when it falls from the top all the way to the ground. So this is going to rule out B, and D is our answer. Wait a second here. Option D seems to explain displacement area under the graph, uh, but what is the velocity as we drop the ball at time t equals zero? We know it's zero, so D is not an option. So we have no answers here, A, B, C, or D. Let's look at the correct velocity time graph. So redrawing my velocity time graph, and I know at time t equals zero, I have zero velocity. There's my red dot. As the ball free falls, we have constant acceleration. So we know the VT graph must be a constant slope. So it we'll, looks like we've got a positive slope. So that means the downwards direction is the positive direction. This very steep negative slope represents acceleration in the upwards direction. That's when the ball makes contact with the ground. And it's not until it leaves the ground that it returns back to constant acceleration downwards of about 10 meters per second squared. So there's our very small interval of time when it's in contact with the ground and leaves the ground 
to return back to 10 meters per second squared downwards acceleration. These two parts of the graph should be parallel, and that's the constant slope of, of 10 meters per second squared. And this part is at the top of the first bounce where my velocity is zero. So the blue line shows the uh, released and dropped to the ground and bounced to about half the height. And that's the VT graph. So if we were to continue bouncing the ball on the ground, we'd see a second and a third bounce, and it would look something like this. There's the top of the second bounce and the top of the third bounce, where my velocity is zero, but where I have constant acceleration downwards uh, about 10 meters per second squared. So the answer to this practice question is option E, which was never presented to you, but of course you figured it out.